In this edition of Learning Bytes for Windows Small Business Server 2011 Standard, we're going to take a look at the Internet Address Management Wizard. So this is one of the first things that you'll do after installing your SBS server, and there's a couple of places where you can find this wizard. On the home page of the SBS console, under the Getting Started tasks, we can see the Set Up Your Internet Address link in the Connect to the Internet section. You can also find this tool in the Network tab under the Connectivity Tasks, where we have the exact same link to set up your internet address. When we start the wizard, we're presented with a Getting Started page that gives us some information about the steps that are going to be performed as part of this wizard. So after reviewing that, go ahead and click Next. At this point, you have a couple of different choices. If you already have a domain name, you can choose to continue to use that. But for a lot of small businesses, they may not have an internet presence uh, to begin with, and so you'll need to purchase a new domain name. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing that it'll do is go out and query for the available domain names and allow you to enter in your own new name. So I'm just going to use a quick uh, SBS 2011 test demo uh, that should be available. We'll go ahead and click Next. And at this point, you're presented with a couple of internet domain registrars that have partnered with SBS to make it very easy to maintain the different uh, DNS records for your domain. So if you want to go ahead and use one of these partners, then you can just select it from the list. If you don't want to use a registrar partner, then you're able to set up your domain name manually. And then when the wizard begins, then you would choose the option to use an existing domain name. So one of the nice things about using the registrar partners, especially for those smaller businesses who may have a dynamically assigned IP address for their public uh, internet address, is that the SBS server will continue to check with the registrar to make sure that the IP address hasn't changed. And if it has, it will automatically update the DNS records uh, at the registrar site so that your services are always available on the internet. The most important of these are probably email so that your email continues to flow and incoming messages are received even if your IP address changes and also the remote web access portal so that uh, your users can always access the SBS environment uh, no matter where they are as long as they have access to the public internet and not have to worry about that uh, address changing or not having the administrator need to worry about updating the DNS records manually if a change does occur. When we click Next, it'll go ahead and check with the registrar to see if that domain is available and then give you a button to go to that registrar's site so that you can go ahead and purchase that domain name. Let's back up in the wizard a little bit and take a look at what it is like if you already have a domain name. At this point, you have a couple of different choices as well. You can let the server manage the domain. So this is very similar to uh, what we were doing previously, where you work with a DNS uh, registrar partner uh, to automatically update those DNS records, but you can also choose to manage the domain for yourself. So this is probably the most hands-on aspect, but for those who are comfortable with this part of the process, uh, you can certainly choose to do that. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, it will be far easier to work with one of the uh, registrar partners so that you don't have to worry about uh, updating those DNS records manually. At this point, you would just enter in the domain name that you have and click Configure. This will go ahead and complete the wizard, uh, assigning all of the different uh, domain names to the various aspects, including, again, the remote web access portal uh, and your Exchange email server. So I hope you found this Learning Byte helpful, and I hope you join us for future Learning Byte sessions.